ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम माई बाउ टू द लॉर्ड वासुदेवा joy to you friends we're talking about the relativity of ascent toward god it's interesting because the vedas are an extraordinary or extraordinarily complete teaching which embrace all aspects of truth and so vedanta teaches the absolute of aham brahmasmi tatvamasi you are one with the infinite that is who you really are and uh, aham saha i am he but there are also teachings in the vedas which are known as karma kand and in these what they do is you try to in a sense placate the gods or get them to be on your side and there are rituals that you can practice that will help you to achieve power in this world fame in this world to get children or wife or husband get to conquer your uh enemies and so on all human desires can be fulfilled from an astral plane more readily than from this physical plane and by the various yagyas or fire sacrifices and mantras and different things in the vedas you can also do that and it is good to understand that these relativities exist in autobiography of a yogi the resurrection of sri yukteswar is the name of one of the most fascinating chapters in which sri yukteswar describes the three universes and he talks in that chapter about uh, the the existence of fairies and gnomes and all these intermediate creatures creatures that may have a completely separate line of evolution from ours the infinity of reality is on so many levels and in fact it is true that there are astral entities that help the crops and yogananda said that it is a good thing to pray also to the devas the lower angels the lower demo- the lower astral forces to help it has been said you know i read recently that the life force in spinach back about 80 100 years ago was 100 times what it is today or was it 10 times it was 90% now it's down around 20% i don't know the exact statistics but the life force is diminishing and uh, there are people who are saying that the there is some something in the atmosphere of the earth today where there is much less um life force in it well i think a lot of this comes from our not having had any uh thought of the existence of these subtler forces with whom we ought to try to work in harmony we try to rape nature in instead of working with harm in harmony with it to draw things from it you know when i first built the meditation retreat up at uh, it's near nevada city and it's uh, a part of ananda village but it's 6 miles down the road from the main part of the village but when i first moved in there there were trees that kept falling down in the way as if there were nature spirits trying to keep us out this they'd lived in peace here and suddenly human beings were intruding and it was very interesting that after a while somebody decided to move out and move to another place and he had his trailer there and he wanted to pull, pull his trailer out and a tree fell right in the way to, as if to prevent him from pulling his trailer out these may be and skeptics would simply laugh at what i'm saying but i do think that it's entirely possible that there were astral entities working to keep us out because they didn't they didn't want to be intruded upon and then when they found we were very peaceable you know in our community the deer which the huntsmen hunt and which are f- normally afraid of people they mix with uh, they come around in our community and uh, even let people feed them and there's no fear in them because they can feel that our vibrations are peaceful realize that this world is mostly consciousness everything is a manifestation of consciousness and uh, 
So it is not wrong to worship these lower deities to a certain extent, certain little rituals to pacify them. And uh, in eating in India, they say, the poor little libation onto the ground to satisfy the earth. There are entities. The Mother Earth is not a wrong concept. Gaia is not a wrong concept. These are truths. But later you will see that Krishna says, those who worship the lower gods go to their gods. Those who worship me come to me. So don't think that by doing a few little Vedic sacrifices, you will achieve what you want in the deeper sense. They will satisfy you to a certain point, but your soul will always remember its home in God. You are a prodigal son. You are wandering in foreign territory. And finally, when there is famine, because things aren't going the way you want, and you're not getting what you want in life, you're not being, your, your soul isn't being fed, then you come back. And then God doesn't say, stay away from me because you're gone away, I don't want anything to do with you. God is not an angry God. What a terrible concept. God can't be angry with you. He's always there lovingly waiting for you, but he will test you to know whether you're sincere or not. When you begin to seek him, there will be tests. Don't think that he will stoop down and clear away all the brambles as you walk that path. He'll probably throw a lot more on with longer thorns in your way. You must finally reach the point where it's your own strength of discrimination, discernment. You know what you want and nothing can stop you from finding it. When you develop that attitude, and that's why the Gita is talking of the battle of Kurukshetra and this being a war, those who are sincerely devotees, they're not armchair philosophers. They don't sit back and just think, well, everything's going to come to me. You have to fight. And even though you're fighting your own tendencies, you have to understand. And those two are objectified. Jesus said, all those who will forsake father, mother, brother, sister, home, everything, for my sake and the Gospels, they will find a hundredfold blessings, but also persecution. And the world will fight you. Everything will fight you to make sure that this is what you want. But once you know what you want and are walking firmly in that direction, the tests begin to diminish. And what you feel then is more and more the draw toward divine love and divine peace. The spiritual path is not the suffering that so many people make it out to be. Every step of the way, the grass becomes greener. Things become more beautiful. Your senses become more alive. Your sense becomes stronger. You hear more beautiful things. The world looks more beautiful. Everything becomes more wonderful as you seek God. Everything depends upon your own inner self. But the Vedas do give these things, and you must understand their level of reality. But you must also understand that anything achieved uh, except from God's hands himself will be relative and will not give you what you are looking for. Therefore, it says in the Gita, those who worship the lower gods go to their gods. Those who worship me come to me. Joy to you.